Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you the new Mocha Pro 2021. Let's go! Well, I'm gonna try my best to translate this Spanish tutorial for you guys. Uh, first of all, we're gonna have a look um, here in After Effects and then we'll move to Nuke. Uh, if we open the Mocha Pro plugin, we can see the new, well, the, this window, this introduction window. And if it's the first time we open it, we are in the Essentials workspace. Here on the top, we can switch to Classic in order to check the new features we have here in this version. Um, one of the new features is the Power Mesh, which is really powerful to track surface with warping that are not planar. And this is gonna be uh, very, very cool for our workflow. Uh, second, we can say we have the Python script editor here in the window menu. Um, here you can see on the right side of the screen to write scripts and to do tools for our workflow. It's powerful if you know about Python. Uh, and the third feature, it's the Adjust Track 2.0. We usually use the Just Track to correct drifting. I had a tutorial. I have a tutorial in my channel about correcting a, an iPad screen. But here with the 2.0, we have like more control and it's like more friendly for the users. So we'll have a quick look later. But uh, let's focus on the track. Let's focus on this power mesh track to see how it's working. I'm gonna start by drawing a, a spline around my face, around the area I wanna track. In this, this instance, I'm gonna draw a spline around my face. I'm gonna click, uh, I'm gonna select by Control Command A all the points, all the points, and just smooth this a little bit around my face. All right. Um, and here on the track tab, we have the mesh bottom. If we hit mesh we automatically can see a mesh around our face. Well, I'm gonna put green my spline. Uh, here we have some different controls. We can make adaptive contrast to, to create more points around areas with more contrast. We can reduce or maximize the size of our mesh in order to have more detail or less. We can have a uniform uh, mesh or an automatic one. Okay, so it's it's pretty cool. We can keep the vertices on the splines or not. It depends on when we want. Uh, here you can see that the splines are the vertices on the splines are gone if we deselect this. Um, we can clear the mesh and generate the mesh. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn this to 32 for now. Um, and yeah, here. Uh, we can see there are a lot of points we can actually modify. Here we have the smoothness, which uh, show us the amount of warp we have and the warp spline that will move the spline to be warp with our track. Um, so the smoothness is, we can say, a big amount of smoothness, a big number. It's for a rigid body and a lower number it's for a, an element with a lot of warping, like a cloth, for example. If we select auto smoothness, Mocha will decide the amount of smoothness we need for this shot, okay? Um, yeah, remember a higher number, uh, less warp, a lower number, more warp. But the auto smoothness will do the work for us. If we hit track forwards, please do not forget to turn on mesh because I accidentally double click and it wasn't working. But no problem, let's do, redo this and hit track forwards. Well, as you can see, it's still working pretty fast and working on a laptop. Um, and yeah, it's taking a little bit to, to mesh track this area. Here we can see that the mesh is warping with the motion of my face. Keep in mind that we can avoid tracking the eyes by masking them out, or even we can add a matte clip to avoid unwanted areas if we want. But yeah, 
for this instance it's working pretty good it's working pretty good um and yeah so i'm gonna show you that here we can uh, modify the points but we're gonna we're not needed this for now but just keep in mind that we can do that and we can see the mesh or see the points okay all right so now what we need is actually to work with this uh, warp in after effects right but let's have a quick look here in stabilize tab and um, if we stabilize by mesh warping we're gonna have our plate stabilized um, according to our track area so here we can see that my face is like warping and pretty stuck on the center of our image but yeah um, we don't really need this for now because we're gonna work with the plugin inside after effects so let's save this and let's go back to after effects so here in the after effects software we can go to the control effects and go to the module renders and if we select the and warp stabilize and warp and we click render we can see that my shot has been stabilized like it was in Mocha actually but this time we can paint or we can add a tattoo or we can add whatever we want here in, in After Effects so I painted this frame in Photoshop which is the frame 13 because it has a less work but as you can see it doesn't match the original plate why? well because um, um, my reference frame it's on frame one because uh, Mocha automatically decided this was my reference frame because I started tracking on frame one. But we actually, when I used the frame 13, because I thought it was easy to paint on this because it has less warp. Okay, so the way we can fix that, the way we can fix that is just uh, open Mocha. find the frame we want which is the frame 13 and um, we can set the reference frame like always uh, just clicking on the surface and expanding to our corners here with this button here we go so you can see that the corners of our surface are already on the entire frame and uh, that means that we set up this reference frame for us and now if we go back to after effects here you go. It's already updated and the frame 13, it doesn't have any warp. And if we switch on the frame I painted in Photoshop, totally matches. It totally matches the original plate. So, okay, cool. Right now we have um, a frozen frame. We can say it's not a frozen frame, but it's a stabilized frame. And we, we need to to give back this motion for our plate. The first of all, we actually need to mask the area we want. So I'm gonna draw a quick shape around my face where I erased my nose and my eyes because we don't want the entire plate. All right. Okay, cool. So right now I have here my eyes. I'm gonna feather this a little bit well, my, my skin, not my eyes. Um, and yeah, on the bottom I have my plate. Cool, so how can we bring this motion back? Just let's pre-compose this, hit OK. And if we go inside, we're gonna copy the Mocha Pro plugin, go back to our pre -com and paste it. But in the medial renders, instead of using stabilize and warp i'm gonna say stabilize warp to give this motion back if we hit play now we can see that the area i added in from photoshop it's already properly tracked to our shot that's really really cool but there is one thing i don't like and it's that we are 
we can say filtering our plate. So I'm gonna turn this plate into a guide layer. So here we can see that it's working, but then here I just have my, my new skin, my new face in one layer. And I'm gonna simply drop the, um, the head, my plate behind it. So right now I have my original plate with no filtering and the track uh, face I, I brought from, from Photoshop. Okay, cool, right? It's really powerful and it just took me 10 minutes to do that, to do that, maybe less. And you can add tattoos, you can add a heart, you can add whatever you want into, into your comps. And we are going to have a look at the, at the Roto workflow with the power mesh. Let's Roto this phone and let's see how it's working. So I'm going to open Mocha again. Okay, I still want this menu in order to be checking the manual and the new stuff. But let's roro, let's roto this this phone with a quick spline around it. Okay, perfect. All right, let's click on perspective and mesh. Please notice that it will have. Um, uh, a, a lower uh, mesh size, it, it's gonna take longer, that's for sure. But it depends on the amount of of um, accuracy we need for the shot. For a roto, we actually don't need that much, at least uh, this time. Don't forget we're spline on, and yeah, here we can see that it it drifts a little bit. Let's change the spline uh, color to check it better. And yeah, here we go. Well, we can see this is the beginning and this is the end. I'm gonna adjust the keyframes a little bit just in order to check how it's working. All right. Ideally, we should find the exact same place the exact, the exact same point where I where I set up the original points but yeah for uh for this purpose it's taking a little bit just to show you and yeah I corrected this frame and as you can see just with a couple of frames of keyframes uh, it's working properly well it probably needs a more adjustments in between and you know probably uh some more points to make it better to make it look better, but it's looking pretty good um, and just in a couple of minutes. Uh, keep in mind that the mesh track took me around two minutes or so. And I'm gonna quickly show you uh, the Adjust Track 2.0 module. I'm gonna try to um, adjust the, the track area on my screen like this. And yeah, sometimes when we are tracking screens or wherever, we have a lead, we have a lead, uh, we have a bit of drifting into our into our screens. So the adjust track is for is for that purpose. Uh, we can adjust just the we can adjust just the translation with one point, and we can even adjust the translation, scale and rotation that will generate two points. Okay, so we we have to place these points when where we want. We can add a three point for a shear translation and, a, and four points for the perspective. So once we are happy with the type of, trans, of transform we want, we place this uh, reference with point, these points where we want and we set the reference frame. And if, we move, and if we move around our timeline, we can correct them by clicking on auto or pixel by pixel with the arrows, or even we can move them manually, all right? But yeah, I should probably uh, make an in-depth tutorial for this, uh, 
new feature. So let's go back for the roto task we were doing. Um, yeah, uh, let's export this shape data for our After Effects. But yeah, here we have a lot of options. We can export to Premiere, to Blackmagic Fusion, to Flame, to Nuke, whatever. But this time we're gonna just um, generate our our roto inside After Effects with the plugin option. Okay, so just save and close. And here in the mat options, if we hit on visible layers, we'll see all the layers. This time I just have one, so let's create AA mask. Um, let's filter this a little bit. And here you go. Here we have uh, the roto we did in Mocha inside After Effects really, really fast. Okay. So, yeah. We are gonna go now to Nuke and we're gonna see a different workflow with the Alembic uh, method. Here we are back in Nuke. Um, let's create a Mocha Pro node. Cool. We can select the node from the bar side or from wherever and click on Launch Mocha User Interface. It opens Mocha uh, the same way we have in After Effects. It's exactly the same software. Um, and we are gonna draw a spline around my face again, uh, but the process in Nuke, it's gonna be very different, okay? So let's uh, draw a spline. Here we go. Smooth this a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, turn on perspective and mesh. Uh, set uniform, generate mesh. Um, yeah, please do not uh, mistake when thinking that the planar track surface is the same than the power mesh. Um, when you add a logo or a grid here, you are checking the planar track. You are not, you are not checking the the warp surface, right? Okay, I'll, I'll show you later. Let's track this first. Okay, so here it's, here it's what I meant. Uh, if we add a, a grid here, we are actually checking the planar surface. We are not checking the warp, right? You understand what I mean? So um, please do not mistake thinking that we are not work the mesh is not working or whatever because the mesh is working a different way. And keep in mind that we can always add a matte clip to avoid unwanted areas or we can obviously uh, roto the area we want to avoid on different layers. Um, okay, now let's pour this track data into Nuke. So we are gonna choose the Alembic Mesh Data option. And here in the Sport Tracking Data menu, we have a reference frame where we can set up our reference frame, uh, which, has, which I said it was 13. This time actually it didn't, it doesn't matter, but but let's do this. Let's save it. Um, let's find the path you want and save it. So now we're gonna go back to Nuke and we are gonna work with this Lemic. Let's save it. Okay, back in Nuke, let's create a read geo. Uh, load this Alembic and it will create a camera as well. Create all in one node. Um, I'm gonna create a, a scanline render just to show you quickly. I always want to, I always like to save my Mocha Pro node there. Uh, go to here, let's create a merge. Um, add a checkerboard for now, just to show you. Here we go, let's put a multiply to turn down the opacity a little bit and the size of this checker as well. All right, if we hit play now, we can see that this mesh, it's perfectly tracked to our face. If we have a look at the 3D uh, space, we can see that this mesh is warping. Okay, that's really powerful. 
I like it. But now we can go even farther because uh, I'm gonna show you um, a quick method to do, for, for example, painting uh, over our face. Imagine, imagine that we have a lot of trackers in our face and we have to erase them. I'm gonna show you how to do that really easily. Let's create a project 3D. Let's put this camera. Uh, okay. Let's find the frame 13 and I'm gonna frame hold this, this frame. Um, cool. And if we now in the scanline render set the projection mode to UVs, we can see that my face is stuck it's totally frozen so it's really powerful as right now we can paint whatever we want like a like a frame hole because we don't have motion on my, over my face i did this <laughs> this very ugly and easy painting and not really good at painting as you can see but yeah to show you i think it works but now we want to give the motion back to our plate so let's create a mesh or well, let's copy the original mesh. Let's copy the scanline render, but this time use a render camera in projection mode instead, instead of the UVs. And as you can see, the motion is back to our plate. That's really, really cool because we painted over like a frame hole. It wasn't actually a frame hole, but it was, um, it, it was in a stabilized shot and we gave the motion back with another scanline render um, wow this is really powerful to remove trackers to add a tattoo to add a heart to add whatever you want be creative um do cool stuff man show me in the comments what you can do with this technique um yeah please notice that we should add a copy with a promote to avoid unwanted errors just uh, select the to just uh, bring the area we want uh, i'm gonna pre multiply by rgba this time just to have this alpha but yeah keep that in mind um and yeah i think as i said that it's really powerful and we can um remove a lot of markers a lot of issues a lot of dirt when we have in a shirt for example or uh or wherever and here is the result notice that using my code nacho Joss in boris effects you'll get a 15 percent discount on any product hope you enjoyed this tutorial hope you you learned a lot um yeah can't wait to see what you guys do please comment below so i can check your works take care